come on up and help me, will you? I need help because I I can't tell what I'm saying. I can't hear nothing. <laughs> and everybody stand and get them a hymnal and turn to page 92. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love, and He wrote my name above. Just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little for is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seemed drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears away. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning, know a little for is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes may fill with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning, know a little for is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, when you can't hear, you can't get off right. <laughs> now turn over to 285. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's a fairy stopped in thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a fairy stopped in thousand to my soul. In sorrow is my comfort, in trouble is my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a fairy stopped in thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrow borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tire. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore through, Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a fairy stopped in thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. Why 
while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall afar about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna, he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. <laughs> I don't know if I can get enough of you. I'm out of breath. Amen. Turn to page 110. Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall ride. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior. Skies. Seems that now I almost see all the saints and dead rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be all the living saints to fly to that heaven's sea. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! On that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. 
When with all the heavenly host we'll begin to sing. Singing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the songs with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Very confusing this morning. <laughs> I stay confused, thank you. You know, uh, <laughs> you're not bored, I'm true. So it's a nice tweak from the God. Let me close my Bible. I'm read this. On a uh, uh, <coughs> calendar of events, January 14th, this is over. Anybody else want one of them? Give me, give me a second. I got the wrong one, so I don't know. Uh, what you're looking for? Okay, okay. I'm going to try that one. But <coughs> today is the, the 21st. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do last, last week, we know, on Wednesday night, we can have Wednesday night service, and we can have Thursday night that, uh, that, that live stream with uh, Brother Gary Phillips. Uh, it's still going to be here this Thursday night, right? May 25th. May 25th. Okay. Remember, remember uh, the previous other day, pray for Brother Terry. Pray he didn't get too cold. Too, well, he didn't get too hot. It might, be, it might be take a whole lot cold today, you know, because we wouldn't be winter tonight, you know. So, but, you know, preach what God tells you to preach. That's the main thing. If it ain't, if it ain't what God sends you, it ain't worth a dime. Okay. <clears throat> Say January 28th, be special for the building fund. February 11th, be special for youth group. February 11th is also a business meeting, and also February 11th is meal for the morning service and no evening service. Okay, uh, January, February 25th, space shopping for building fund. March the 10th, space shopping for youth group, the business meeting, sunrise service on the 31st, with Brother Josh Jones to preach. And, uh, and also the 31st is uh, youth Sunday, and space shopping for building fund, also that same day. Then you both. Okay. <laughs> and then on March the 8th through the 9th, it's uh, Corinth is having a youth rally. They do it all through the week and then they do it twice a week. March the 8th. Remember these things, uh, there'll be probably in a book next week, I would say. Remember that? Uh, prayer request is Ralph Mink. Diane Eisenhower, Andy Lowe, Ryan, Ross Bow, Willis Lewis, Kevin Menard, Regional Family, Bobby Fleener, Joe Gentry, David Dillick. Yeah, I thought it was. Pray for his family, uh, Joe Gentry's family. He did pass away. Uh, David 
Doug Taylor, Helen Berger, Cindy Ice, Cindy Ice and Riley, Willie, June Campbell, Danny Socher, Danny McAlay, Timmy Taylor, Becky Joe Atwood, John Pope, Percy Hurst, uh, I, I talked to her son-in-law the other day, he said they had put on, I think they called hospice things for her. Marianne Gamble, Larry Adams, excuse me, Larry Hawkins, Willie Gray Adams, Carlton Shirley Rice, Jody Dunn, Angie Dolly, Michaela Taylor, Jack Walton, Logan Murray Miller, Joe Mack Press, the inside of the doing? How'd Joe Mack, how'd Joe Mack do? Continue to pray for Brother Joe Mack. Ralph Hoda, Early Crowder, Dennis Lewis, Kirk Dennis, they get your head straightened out. God, God knows what he needs, we don't. And Greg Mullins, Mandy Cornette, Paul Wiggins, Lewis Anderson, David Ward, Christian Owen, Haley Adams, I believe Christian Holmes, Tony Jennings, David Salt. Sheila Kennedy, Dorothy Keller, Diane Buchanan, Lynn McCulloch, Richard Perdue, and Clyde and Judy Owen, William Williams, Holly Rankin, Jim Byers, Jim and Jane Head, Mindy, Fli Mindy Fleming, Lester Dunn, Father Joe Tetra, Will Gray, Stafford and Jan Humphrey, Sue Williams, Frank and Joette of Maine, Brenda Lunsford, Andy Osborne, Christian Moore Tressler, Diane Harmon, Avery Greiner, Emily Church, Jim Lewis, Eddie Cross, and Jerry Buchanan, Lorraine and Scott Freeman, Lorraine of Maine, Michelle Worley, Judy Campbell, his sister, Terry and Melissa, Bertrand and Adam Worley, Eddie's family, Patty Osmond, Glenn Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Rhea Dunn, Luke Campbell, Buffy Connett, Loretta, Brenda Carraway, Carl Mass, Dustin Rankin, Alicia, Alicia Dead, Mike Lifford, Donnie and Lisa Byer, Tony Hernandez, Margie Eisenhower, Bob Miller and wife, Nancy Button, John Yates, Paul Grable's wife, Bud Crosswhite, Jean Buchanan, Nathaniel Grice, Bernice Poe, Unspoken, Tammy Thomas, Ronnie Henson, Teresa Riley, Callum Porter, Donna Taylor, the cable, and the Cable family. Anyone else? Yeah, we got uh, Emily Farmer. And her family? Yeah, she passed away. She was buried last week. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she was buried last week. time <coughs> if we don't pray for these as soon as we're here or when Brother Terry takes to pray for somebody we don't pray for them you know what I'm saying we could all do it tonight but tonight we forget about it you know a lot of us I know we just pray for us if I don't do it right then stop and say God be with this family or be with this person whatever and they know their needs right then and my time some of the time we forget about it Buster Brown family too. He passed away.
Ball leaves, you know, it's a hard time when somebody can come to Christ the Lord or somebody's real sick. They might be families because, you know, we don't know what they need, but God do know what we need, and that's the main thing. Remember, uh, when you'd always prayed up, you know, all your stuff prayed up, and you know, you ain't got nothing else to pray for? Pray for me. I need to pray every day. You know, I think we all need prayer every day. Okay, uh, what can I say? That it? Uh, huh? And the birthdays. Christ Lord's coming up. Lord, you got a birthday? Yeah, Two more days. Two more days. I know Hazel's on two days over too. Tell back today, you feel better than today. Oh, we'll feel better. <laughs> hey, what day is your birthday on? Twenty fifth. Thursday. Mine's the twenty fourth. It's your birthday too. Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah. I'm the two. I'm still two. Anyway. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Happy birthday, happy birthday, birthday everybody. Too old. Kind of got echo here, doesn't it? Yeah, I understand, but everybody, that's why they keep asking. Man, I said it's good to be back in the Lord's house this morning, amen, or this afternoon, I should say. It's good to be back in God's house and around God's people. I tell you, with uh, this old snow and stuff and cold weather, kind of slick roads, kind of keeps people away and keeps people out, and I know that it's still awful slick out there, so you'd be much in prayer for those that's still having trouble getting out. 
But for those of us that are able to gather out, for those tuning in, we appreciate you as well. But for us that's gathered out here today, I say let's worship and serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, Let's worship God. I tell you, there's no greater God to serve than the one we serve. Amen. He sure enough has been good to us. Amen. He sure has been good to us. We appreciate you this morning, maybe or this afternoon. Maybe somebody's got a, a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord this, this afternoon. Amen. Appreciate that. Anybody else this morning? Something on your heart? Word, testimony, song, something you'd like to do? Hearts and minds clear? Then we'll go open our Bibles up over the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 when you find your place. If you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Again, I do desire your prayers this afternoon. We would uh, Always, as always, we just want to stand and say and do that which God would have us to do. Uh, when we get done, we want to get, when he's done, we want to get out of the way. Amen. Because it doesn't do us a bit of good to stand up here as long as, and say the things that we'd have on our heart, but the things that God would have us to say. Amen. And we'll tell you what, we do appreciate God for all that he's done for us and how good he's been. Been a lot of bad weather, a lot of things going on. God's still been good. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, and we're going to begin to read in verse number 1. The Bible says this, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontentment, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, as some of ourselves before thee. Lord, thanking you for another day and another opportunity, God, just to be able to gather out on this side of eternity. Lord, I pray for each one that's here this this afternoon, God. I pray whether they're here in person or, or Lord, whether they're tuning in online. I, God, whatever needs to be said or done will be said or done. What needs to be received will be received today, dear God. Lord, I thank you for giving us a place to be able to come to. Lord, I thank you for being able to give us a place, God, that we might be able to worship and serve you. I pray, dear Lord, for all the means and ways of getting it. But, Lord, I thank you for your word. God, just how rich and true and sweet that it is. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll apply these words to our heart to help us to have an enjoyable day today, dear God, in your, in your spirit and in your will. We give you all the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I also know this. The Bible told us right here that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amen. I, I don't know if you know what that means or not, but that's dangerous times. That's wild times. I, that's uh, times that are different than other times. Amen. I, and I tell you right now, if we look around, it's easy for us to say, uh, hey, that we look like we're lo- living in perilous times. Amen. Amen. When we look about, the, see the things that's happening in our world today, we see the, the abortions and all the things that's going on. Uh, some of the very things that he listed out here, well, all of the things that, uh, uh, that Paul listed out here when he was writing uh, under Timothy there, he began to write to him and tell him about how people were going to be lovers of their own selves. Uh, I've never seen a time when it's more about, let's talk about me, amen, uh, selfish times that we live in, amen, uh, I know we look in our government, we look in our uh, in society around the world, uh, and we can see it going on all over us, truth breakers, liars, and all these things going on. Uh, we see the things about the, uh, the, the from natural affections, uh, uh, the LBQT, ABCDEFG, and all that other stuff that they've got on there. Uh, hey, we listen, we see all these things. And you know, sometimes when you turn the news on or you try to watch these things and, and you hear things going on, sometimes it's hard not to get depressed, isn't it, amen? I, 
Sometimes it's hard to look around and see the world that we live in uh, and realize it is not the world that we once knew. Amen? Uh, it's hard to believe that people would call the things good that are evil. Amen? Uh, but the Bible plainly tells us that they will call good evil uh, and evil good. Uh, the Bible tells us that those things are going to happen. Uh, it tells us that they're going to be that. Uh, and we're going to see those things and they're going to come to pass. Uh, and it's just going to wax worse and worse and worse. Uh, for what we ought to know is this, uh, that the end of this thing, uh, that the end of this world, uh, it is getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, I don't know have a day, I don't have a time, uh, but one thing I do know uh, is that the Word of God is true, amen, uh, that the Word of God is, uh, is exactly right. Uh, time is running out. Uh, every time, every time, Every second that ticks off the clock, every second that happens, it's a little bit closer, amen? I was thinking about how bad that it gets and how many things that we've saw that go different. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe that, that we live in a time when you can't, I mean, you have to keep your eye on your children and grandchildren every second of the day, amen? I mean, as much as possible because somebody, the old Satan and the, and the demons of this world are there to steal, kill, and destroy, amen? They're there to take care of, to take, to take them out from under you, to snatch them away. Man, I tell you what, it's hard not to get down and out, amen? Thinking about the things of this world. I got to thinking this week, and this thought came to our mind, in perilous times. I've ne I've, I know I've preached this, this, this uh, from these scriptures before. I, and we want us a lot of times talk about all the bad things uh, that are going on. It's easy to point those things out. I, this is what the Lord showed us this week when He put these verses on our heart. I, listen, I want to preach this a few moments this, uh, this afternoon uh, about some positive things uh, in perilous times. Amen. I, I got to thinking, you know, we get so caught up with the doom and the gloom. Uh, we get so caught up with how bad things are. Uh, but I tell you what, we forget, we forget just how good we really got it. Amen. Uh, even in perilous times, uh, I tell you some positive things to think about uh, in perilous times. And one of the things I got to thinking about was this. Uh, I told you that, that time is running out. Uh, there has never been a day, a minute, or a second uh, that we've been closer to going home uh, than right now. Amen. Uh, hey, it's getting close to time to get out of here. Uh, hey, we've preached about heaven. We've talked about heaven. Uh, we've talked about how sweet it is. Uh, and I tell you, it gets sweeter every day. Uh, seeing how far this world has gone, uh, seeing how far by, away from God it's gone, uh, just to know that we are getting closer uh, to going home. Amen. Uh, to going home. Uh, well, listen, I was talking the other night, and she said, was talking about uh, we don't know how many years we got, but we'd like to uh, live in, uh, live those years happy uh, and together. Uh, hey, I told her, I said, I don't think uh, it's going to be very many. Amen. Uh, hey, why? Because I can see home. Uh, I can see home over yonder. Uh, I'm glad to know uh, that heaven, even in perilous times, uh, I'm getting closer to home. Amen. Uh, I'm getting closer over yonder. Amen. Uh, what a place that is going to be. Uh, what a place that is uh, that we be able to go and see that. Amen. Uh, that we see that thing. Uh, hey, I tell you what, it's a far, far cry. Uh, this world's a far, far cry from what we once knew. Uh, but heaven's still the same. Amen. Uh, heaven's still the same. Uh, heaven over yonder. Uh, it's a place where the streets are paved with gold. Uh, it's a place over there where the river flows uh, from the throne of God. Uh, hey, it's a place over there where well, we'll never uh, no pain or sorrow. Uh, it's a place over yonder. Uh, hey, where well, we'll not have to go through the things uh, that we've been through here uh, in perilous times. Uh, let's look toward heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, there's an old saying. So when you can't go nowhere, you can go home when you can't go nowhere else. Look, I'm headed home. Amen. I think so many times about being out on vacation and being out on work and being out in different places, uh, I think so many times about going home, amen. Uh, 
What about going home? Hey, there ain't nothing like it. There ain't no other place I'd rather be. There's no, listen, I'm telling you, it's good to get out once in a while. It's good to get around God's people, but it's still no place like home. Hey, one of these days we're going to leave out of here. All one of these things, we got, so we got to make sure that we're laying things up over there and not things that tie us down here. In perilous times, I know I've got a home waiting for me over yonder. Amen. I'm glad to know that in perilous times, God hadn't give up on us. <coughs> I'm glad to know that even in the last day, He still shows up. I'm glad to know that even in the last day, God's still in the saving business. Amen. Now, I'm glad to know that in the last days and perilous times, uh, hey, that heaven is still real. And I'm glad to know uh, that uh, there has not been a time that, uh, that God does not, has not been saving. Amen. Uh, I was thinking about this so many times in, in, in people's lives. I wonder why it is that tragedy has to strike or why it is that perilous times has to come in a person's life for them to realize, hey, that they need something besides themselves. Amen. They need something besides themselves to be able to help them out. Amen. They need to reach out and call out on somebody else. Hey, I tell you what, until we get to that place, until we realize, just what a perilous state we live in and what a perilous place we are we'll never be saved hey but I'm glad one day I saw just what I was I saw where I was headed and God changed it all amen I'm glad that even in perilous times God still saving souls amen we can look around and then our very own families and with our very own church we can find where God is still moving. Uh, even though all these things that Paul just preached about, uh, even after all these things that he said was going to be going on, uh, we can see that God is still saving. Uh, hey, that's a positive thing uh, in a perilous day. Amen. Uh, hey, don't let the doom and the gloom of this world uh, keep you down. Uh, don't let the doom and the gloom of this world uh, keep you from realizing and enjoying uh, just what God says is so great. Uh, I tell you how great salvation is. Uh, Bible said there is great rejoicing uh, over in heaven uh, over one sinner uh, hey that comes home uh, I'm telling you we've got something to get excited about uh, we've got something to look to uh, hey you say well my family's saved uh, well how about your neighbors uh, how about the ones around you how about your co-workers uh, hey I think it's time uh, that in perilous times uh, we started telling everybody uh, there's still something worth looking forward to Amen. There's still something worth looking forward to. There's still something that they need that they're missing. So many times, so many times the old devil likes to get us in a place of worry. Amen. In a place of stress. In a place, look, there's things that we can change that we need to change. Amen. If you can do any, here's what worry is, and I, I read this a long time ago and God gave it to us. I read this a long time ago and it said this. It said, why worry about the things you can change? If you can change them, change them. Amen. You can't change them. You can't do nothing about it. You put it in God's hands and leave it with it. Amen. Put it in God's hands because nothing is impossible with Him. Hey, I know we want to see things. I know we want to do things. And I know I've got a lot of people that I want to see saved. But sometimes they're going to have to get in perilous times before they ever get their life made right with God. Sometimes they're going to have to hit rock bottom before they ever get saved. Hey, you may know somebody that's going through a perilous time. You may know somebody somebody's going through a hard time let me tell you something it might just be God working things out hey man get excited look I heard this statement made so many times we have, we've talked to people and deal with people and we've talked to them in a, in a, in a lot of their perilous times and a, a lot of people have come to the preacher and come, and, and come to Christians when they're going through hard times because they want what they have fixed. They want what they have resolved. Here's what I heard this statement a, a, a few weeks ago. And it's really stuck with me. The man told him, said, look. He said, God won't change your circumstances. 
He won't change your consequences. Look, we do things in our lives that cause consequences. If I hit my finger with a hammer, there's a consequence of pain that follows. Now, I can pray that God take that pain away. I can have faith that God took that pain away. But there's a pretty good chance that that pain's not going to go away till it subsides on its own. Amen? You know why? Because I was the dummy that hit it with a hammer. Amen? Uh, look, but you know what? This was the statement. Uh, hey, God don't change. He don't change your consequences. But He sure can change you. I'm glad that even in perilous times, when things get bad, I'm glad that God can still work things out for me. Amen? I'm glad that He still can work things out for us. I'm glad that God is still in control, ain't you? I'm glad that God is still moving. I say it so many times in our life. So many times in our life we look at the bad things. We look at the rough portions and the things that's going on. I was thinking this week about Moses and the Red Sea. I was thinking that, you know, he let God call Moses to lead the children out of Egypt. And only the, uh, the one of the first places that they come to. Uh, God told them, I want you to get your people, get my people out of there. Uh, I want you to lead them to the promised land. Uh, and the one of the first places that they came to was a Red Sea. Amen. Uh, and there they was up against that Red Sea. Uh, you know what they could have done? Uh, some of them even said we ought to go back. Amen. Uh, some of them said we ought to go back to that mess uh, that we come out of. Why? Because they got in a perilous time. Amen. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I live. I'm glad I serve a God uh, that I don't have to go back to the mess that I left. Amen. Uh, that I don't have to go back to the mess that I got out of. Uh, I'm glad I serve a God uh, that even in perilous times, uh, He'll make Make a way where they looks like there is no way. God will make a way. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing or suffering. But I can tell you this. Even in bad times, God is still in control. Amen. Amen. He's still in control. <coughs> Too many times in our life, we forget just how much control God has. And what sometimes, how it has to we have to be in a perilous time to realize it. I was thinking about over there when Peter was in jail, or Paul was in jail. The Bible said there was a great earthquake came. And they was praying there, there's a great earthquake come. All the jail cells opened up. All the inmates was, uh, could have ran out, could have went anywhere. And there was a jailer there who was ready to take his own life. He was ready because he knew exactly what those prisoners was gone. What was going to happen? He was going to lose his life. There in the middle of an earthquake. There in the middle of it all. He was ready to take his own life. But you know what God was willing to do? Peter said, hey, don't take your life. He spoke up and said, hey, we're all here. You know what happened? All because God was in control. That jailer and his whole family got saved. Hey, I'm telling you this. Just hang on. God still got this. He's still in control. I don't know what you face or what you go through, but God sure does. Listen, I want you to know this. You ain't the only one. You ain't the only one. You say, well, man, I got, I got family trouble. Let me tell you about a guy that had some family trouble. There's a fellow by the name of Joseph over in the Old Testament. He had some brothers. He had 11. The Bible said that his father loved him. He made him a coat of many colors. Now Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph had visions from God. His brothers couldn't stand him. You know what his brothers did to him? Throwed him in a ditch and left him to die. And all of a sudden one of the brothers decided, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. So they went back to get him out. And then they finally as they was getting him out, there's a band of gypsies come by. You know what the brothers did then? They got him out and said, hey, ain't no need to let him die. Let's just sell him off into slavery and we'll make some money off of him. And we'll go back and tell dad that, the, the, uh, that they, something ate him, amen, that he got eaten. They sold him off into slavery. Joseph went down into Egypt and he got down there. The Bible said there and he was, he was blessed of God. Look, you may be here today and you may think your family may not want nothing to do with you. 
You may be here, you may be in family problems, have family problems and trouble. <laughs> Let me tell you something, God is working when we don't even know he's working. In perilous times, amen. Uh, there he was thrown in a ditch. Uh, there he was left in jail. After that, he was accused of things he didn't do uh, with, his, with Potiphar's wife. Uh, hey, he was thrown in prison for that. Uh, finally got out, uh, was made second in the kingdom uh, during the middle of a drought, amen. Uh, God protected the family of Joseph. I'm telling you, uh, keep on moving for God. Uh, keep on looking to the positive things. Uh, there's people in your family that are waiting on you looking to you to see what you're going to do they're going to need you <coughs> they're going to need you in positive in, in, in perilous times they're going to need you when things are falling apart look I got family all over this country I got family all over the place they don't talk to me very often we don't talk to each other just very seldom do we talk. But I promise you this. I'll promise you this. You let a perilous time come in their life. You let a perilous something bad happen in their life. You want to know who they want praying for them? You want to know who they call? We want to know who they reach out to when they need some help. Hey, let me tell you something. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with Terry Steele. But it has everything to do with the one I'm serving. Even in perilous times. Hey, I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep going toward the cross. I want to keep going toward home. Why? Because somebody needs to see that even when bad things happen to us, even when things bad happen in my life, I can still see that God is working it out. Amen. <coughs> we can look through all of our lives. I guarantee you we can look through all of our lives. And we can find perilous times that have been there. When we thought things were just couldn't get no worse. I remember many years ago now, my wife was told, you all know the story, she was never supposed to have children. But I can remember the countless nights. I can remember the sleepless nights. I can remember all the conversations. I can remember all the heartache. But I can remember when she was pregnant with Jason. And she had to go have a test done. And she failed this test. I think it was a sugar test or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. But I remember seeing the look on her face and knowing exactly how she was feeling because she'd done miscarriage the first miscarriage the first time. And I can remember getting down beside the bed and praying half the night through. I can remember just reaching out and calling out on God. Here it was in, in our mind and especially in her mind, her whole world was falling apart. There was nothing in its right place. There was nothing expect, nothing going to turn out right. <coughs> Why would it? They told her she'd never have children. Why would it? She'd done lost one. Why would things work out? Now, hey, I'm telling you that even in perilous times, uh, you get a hold of God. Uh, Bible says uh, for us to call on Him uh, in everything. Uh, we prayed half the night through, uh, and the next morning, uh, wasn't nothing wrong. Uh, everything was fine. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, even in perilous times, uh, God's still in control. Amen. I promise you this, that everybody in here probably has a story. That everybody in here has something that they could tell. <clears throat> I was thinking this week with all this snow on the ground, all this snow and all these things happening. I thought this week as we got out when it first snowed, isn't it beautiful what snow does? I mean, we got enough snow to cover everything. And I mean, it just looked like a white blanket out there. That's what God does in people's lives. I thought about that, and I thought about all that stuff that was laying underneath it. All those things that was down there. I thought about what Bible says, and God's love covers a multitude of sins. I 
got to thinking about just how pure it was out there. But then I got to drive. Then I come through and started plowing. And then you started seeing a car or two go by. And then you started seeing people coming by just every now and then. And I was driving out the road the other day. I believe it was yesterday as I was coming up to the church. I come up here and cleared off a few things. And I was coming up here and I began to see the dirt and the things that were strode over in the snow. And I began to see, hey, that snow was beautiful. That snow was perfect until man put his hands in it. I'm telling you today, I'm glad that even in perilous times, man cannot wreck God's plan. Man cannot destroy what God has already done. Why don't you look toward heaven? Why don't you look toward him? No matter how bad it gets. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every Christian prayed, every heart thirsted. Whatever's going on in your life, however bad it is, Snow on the ground, fire in our hearts. Aren't you glad that even in perilous times we can get on fire for God? Aren't you glad that even in perilous times we still have a God to call out on? Aren't you glad that even in perilous times we've got somebody that is close? We've got somebody that is near. What a Savior! What a God! Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you've never been saved. I don't know your heart. I don't know where you are with God. If this was the last day, if God was to sound that trumpet, call his children home, would you be going or would you be left? Would you be going or would you be left? If you're here today and you've never been saved, would you be honest with yourself? <clears throat> honest with God? Slip your hand up, put it right back down. Say, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, I'm not really sure. I don't know where I'm saved or whether I'm not. Will you pray for me? Just slip it up, put it right back down, say, Pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here today, you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I should be with God. I want to get back to where I need to be. Will you pray for me? Just slip your hand up, put it right back down, say, Pray for me. Amen. Amen. God sees those hands. Anybody else today? Maybe you're here today, maybe you got a burden on your heart, something you need to pray about. Something you want us to help you pray about. Just slip it up, put it right back down. Amen, 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 amen. God sees all those hands this morning. He sees you. Maybe you raised your hand or maybe you didn't. You want to slip out of that pew. You want to come down this altar. You want to join the others. It's already here. Would you come? Would you come? Listen, God's in control. God's in control. She's going to finish up playing and we're going to the Lord in prayer. Don't miss out on an opportunity to get right with God. Don't miss out on an opportunity just to come and thank Him for how good He is. Anybody else want to come before we pray? I hope everybody's saved and ready to go. Jason. Man, we do appreciate you this evening. Has anybody maybe got a word or a testimony on your heart before we close? Hearts and minds clear. Let's all stand to our feet.
Do be much in prayer for services Wednesday night and Thursday night. We do need everybody that can to come out and be a part of the choir on, thir- on Wednesday night and Thursday night. We'll practice a little bit on Wednesday night and we'll sing on Thursday night as well. We appreciate everybody that's come out. We're going to get ready to go out and have some sled riding. So if anybody wants to hang around and be a part of that, we greatly you, you're more than welcome to hang around. I uh, hope you dress warm or have some warm clothes. So be praying one for another. Tell somebody about the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Buck if he will to dismiss us. <laughs>